What up with you guys? You know who it is. It's your boy John Mike. Uh, and today I'm going to be doing another head to head comparison. This time I'm doing Session Horns Pro versus Veer 2's Mojo Horn Section. Two very popular uh, horn libraries uh, that you can use to, you know, in your productions to try to get some realistic sounding horn tracks so let's get into it and let's start with what we always start with which is the sound how do they sound compared to each other so this first one that i'm going to play for you is actually the veer to the mojo horns uh just play this example just a couple of lines for you so you can hear them uh check it out sounds like this <laughs> So that's Veer 2, and I kind of got them set up in the same kind of mode. You, it's hard to see right here. It looks like it just says trumpet, but it's actually like a multi with trumpet, uh, trombone, and alto sax, similar to this one. You know, got two trumpets and sax and all of that over here. But that's Mojo. That's how it sounds. So let's go over here to uh, Session Horns. And let me show you guys how that sounds. So definitely stark differences in the sound and the tone and the quality. I tried to take out all of the effects and stuff from Session Horns Pro and same way here to get just the dry sound so you can just hear the instruments as is without tweaking. Um, in my, from my ears, if you're listening on headphones, you can probably tell the difference. If you're listening on some iPhone or Android or Samsung speakers, the little phone speakers, uh, you're probably going to have a difficult time telling the difference between uh the overall difference in the intricacies of the tone but in my opinion session horns has a little bit warmer sound that doesn't mean that it's better it just it's more intimate it's more close it's more in your face uh and the um mojo is great as well has a great tone as well uh but uh it has it's just a different tone it's more sharper so I would say if you're doing something where you need some really kind of sharp, cutting, piercing horns, you know what I'm saying? Um, right out the box, Mojo will probably give you that. Like if I go back and play it again. You know what I mean? Something that's just kind of punchy. You know what I'm saying? That kind of hits you. You know what I mean? It's kind of got that sharp, kind of stab, kind of bite to the brass. You know what I mean? Harder sample, maybe less velocity layers. I'm not sure how they achieve that. Uh, but Session Horns is a little bit more dynamic. Yeah. You know that, take that line right there. You know what I mean? That's a little bit more biting on Mojo. Whereas that one's a little bit softer. Now, I'm pretty sure there's some things I can do in here and tweaks uh, to, that could make it a little bit more, ah, you know, more bite, so to speak. Uh, but just right out the box, I'm talking just dragging it in, opening up. Those are the sounds that you get. Now, let's talk about what really separates these two libraries, which is the features, the functions, the tweaks, all of the things you can do to it uh, to make it a little bit more uh, customized and customize your sound and get a different kind of feel to it. So over here, I'll start with Mojo. Um, Mojo is a overall simple kind of GUI or graphical user, user interface that don't know what GUI is interface overall simple interface um 
you know, you got a section for your key switches, you got a uh, section for effects, and you it's just kind of not graphical at all. And with this in the multi mode, I gotta edit each one of the instruments kind of separately, you know. If I change one, I gotta change if I add reverb or whatever to this one, I gotta go and individually add it to each one of these individual sounds to get a match and get the same kind of tweak or whatever. Then you got the engine section, which kind of tells you what, it, um, you know, uh, what uh, articulation you're on, which I'm on sustain. You can change articulations by hitting these um, key switches and you get different, you know, you get the different articulations. You know, uh, I'm trying to see if I can find out. You know, get those rips and those different things like that. Uh, so that's how you change your key switches and it shows you here. But another thing that I thought was pretty cool about, I always have thought, because I've had Mojo for a little while, I uh, thought was pretty cool about Mojo was that they had this little kind of knob here that adds players to your, you know, multiple, you know, players. So right now it's set on kind of none, just one player. I can add two, three, four, five, six, up to 10 sax players in here. And let's solo just the sax. We'll solo this inside of here so you can hear the difference. So if I go back down here to solo, this is what it sounds like in solo. You know, sounds just like that. I gotta get off of that. Uh, get back and sustain here. So if I add in some more players, say two players, I keep going up. Three players, four players. Sound gets a little bit fuller. Six players. So now I kind of get it gets wider on me. If you're hearing on listening on headphones, you can hear that. Kind of has a chorusing effect on it as well. Ten players. And you can do that with each one of yours to kind of fatten up your section, so to speak. So if I go four players on all, let's just do four players on all. And let's see the difference in the tone that we get. Take it off solo mode. And get... You know, we got those keys, key, key switches changed. But it kind of gets a little bit fuller. Almost like session horns, you know. A different, different tone, but, you know, kind of get that same width, so to speak. You know, out of doing that. So, really good stuff over here. That's pretty much the limit of what you can kind of tweak. There's other little things, vibrato, sustain, section, uh, four players. You can kind of edit the depth and all of that. Uh, there's your pitch being range and, you know, different little tweaks here, but nothing really too you know, heavy, and you have to do, you have to edit them all on an individual standpoint. So if you change something up here, you got to change it down throughout the other ones the same way and kind of go through. There's no real global kind of effect is really what I'm talking about and men making mention to that. Now, that's pretty much the, you know, interface. Now, another thing about Veer 2 is they have different section combinations over here. So you got your alto, tenor, you know, uh, sax kind of thing. And you kind of got your different sections kind of built in. And that's in the multi-mode, you know, that you can kind of play with there. Uh, and then you have in here in the in instruments, you have several different, um, you know, kind of uh, things that you can add in. You have your core instruments, which gives you all of the individual instruments. And then they have what I guess they call core instruments light, uh, which are 
You know, it has a few other things in here. Clarinet and piccolo trumpet and some different things like that that you can add in. Uh, ensembles, you know, where you can bring them all together, different types of ones. Then um, special effects, which was really cool. It's just like, I guess it's like the, um, from what I played with it, it's like the uh, sounds of the instruments clicking and noises and things of that nature and then uh what i thought was pretty cool if i kind of close well i'll do this we'll do this is a section called riffs where you could bring in some different riffs so i'll bring in this alto sax and just kind of show you really quick and then we'll jump over to session horns uh let's bring this up to omni just for the thing and hit solo so now if I play this, it just plays a riff just by playing one single note. So there's different riffs mapped to the different notes. So that's pretty cool, you know, just to kind of get some little lead lines if you're playing with something, need some ideas, trying to come up with something or that matches simply something that you're doing. It's a lot of jazz stuff. Jazz kind of runs and riffs from what I have uh, experienced from going through those different presets. All right. So uh, that's pretty much Mojo, pretty in a nut, pretty much in a nutshell. Let's take a look. I'm going to collapse this and I'm going to bring session horns front and center and let's show you the difference between the two besides sounds now this is just the the key switches mode of session horns but it includes um all these different instruments that you can do and i what i always what i'm thinking what, I, what i'm loving about session horns pro is the fact that i can click here and i can build my section and you get this kind of graphical more graphical interface uh that lets you pick and load different instruments i can do single instruments you know a muted trumpet a fugal horn or whatever or i can go to combinations you know and if there's a combination that i'm not using it will show up and i can load this particular combination into a slot which is pretty cool or i can choose to take it out at all and have nothing in that particular slot so it's pretty cool how you can load up your different instruments right there uh, you have your different modes up here, polyphonic, legato, chords plus legato, smart voice split, which is supposed to like let you, when you play a chord, it automatically kind of adjusts the sections to what you're playing uh, and maps them smart, you know, what note with the saxophone play, what note with the, the, the trombone play, so on and so forth. Uh, and then you have like other presets here where you can load in different types of sections. Uh, and your articulations show up right here, but you can do these key switches right here that give you all of the different articulations similar to the stuff that you heard in um, Mojo there without going in and showing you all of the articulations. There's plenty of videos on Session Horns Pro out there that will show you all of the articulations and how they work, and this is just an overview. I don't, I don't want to get into features you know what i'm saying i want to get into just giving you an overview of what this instrument does so you have all of that uh and what's really cool about it you have a sound section that allows you to mix these instruments on an individual basis solo mute pan all of that good stuff for your sections all right in here controlling the volumes and all of that of everything you have your reverb right here your delay under global effects, when we were talking about that, the difference between Mojo and all of that um, is set in there. And then you have um, global master effects where you can add compression. So I have this in here. So if I hit compression and turn that on, and if I click on comp, I can see my compressor. compressor um, you know, setting. You know, so on and so forth. EQ, where you can EQ, do global EQ. Tape, tape makes everything better. So before tape, 
get tape on. You know, it just warms it up. The thing they call twang. I think it's just pretty cool how they kind of got that set up. You know, different things that you can do to kind of make it, to, to edit the sound and give it some more bite, some more, you know, growl. And then you got your control section here, which allows you to do control your um, pitch bend and what it does and, you know, time stretching and round robin and things that other things like that. But that's just the key switches mode, which is the basic mode of it. Uh, but if I expand it out here, I can go in and I can get just like on Mojo, I can get the uh, individual instruments and just have that. If I just want a trumpet, if I just want a trombone or whatever, it's all right there and I can mess with it and do what I need to do with that. In addition to also having uh, a performance mode, which gives you uh, access. And I didn't mean to load that up, but gives you access to different um um predefined songs and riffs and all of those different things like that it's pretty cool this is the performance mode not too much different just gives you all of the, the what they call the animator where you can get all of the different uh, sounds you know all of the different song presets and all of that good stuff like that so hopefully this just gives you a good insight into what's the real difference between these two instruments and helps you make a decision price wise i believe that the it's been a while i've had mojo for a long time uh it's been a while i believe the mojo was somewhere in the when i got it was somewhere in the four or five hundred dollar range session horns is much cheaper in the two hundred dollar range uh i could be wrong don't quote me on those prices uh, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, it's been a while because I've had Mojo for a long time. Uh, so hope it helps you guys. Hope it blesses you. Check out the links to check out these products are in the description. You can click on those and check those out. Uh, and yeah, we'll call that a video and we'll see you guys on this next stream. I'm out. You know how we do it. Holla at your boy.